Hello, 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 YouTube. In this video, we are going to be calculating the weekly returns of various stocks. Now, this was requested, um, and eventually I'm going to make a video where we cover making um, this thing. Sorry for burning your eyes with the ridiculous non uh, dark mode, but um, this is uh, an email I get every single week uh, from a Python script I wrote, and I get a series of them that are about the biggest rises for a very a load of UK uh, companies and then I get a corresponding one that is the biggest fallers for that index and I get these these tables uh, they tell me you know what the current price is what the, the last change is across the week and so on and so forth now in this video all we're going to be doing is just doing this bit where we calculate what the actual the difference between this week and last week is um, because this is something this, this data is something that uh, is annoying because not a lot of websites actually provide it and I've also got one of these for the month as well and barely anywhere provides uh, this information for the month in this format where you can just have a goosey goosey gander and see everything at a glance without finding the uh, financial times and buying that so yeah we're going to do this with python uh, it'll be similar to some of the other videos we've done previously uh, so if you go to the link in the description there will be the tickers.csv file um, which will be formatted like this. It's a whole series of uh, tickers from the UK indexes, and you should be able to follow along this with this tutorial. You also may have your own list, in which case, you feel free to use that. So if we get started now, I have already done some of the boring stuff where we, for example, uh, import the uh, tickers from the CSV file. Also, we're gonna be outputting the stocks that we create into a CSV file called weekly returns. Um, this is just a sort of boilerplate bit of code. Uh, this thing over here is just re-indexing uh, some columns. Um, I've covered what this actually does in previous videos, so I didn't think there was much point in going through it again. Um, so without further ado, let's get started on actually writing the stuff that we want to do. So um, the first thing, let's just do uh, an if, if main name is equal to uh, main. Then what do we want to do? Well, what we want to do is we want to say for ticker in uh, get stocks. And I only care about, let's say like five for this video because otherwise it'll take forever to run. It takes quite a while to run this whole thing. Uh, then we need to have uh, some function here where we pass the ticker to it and we're going to get the, the data. And then we're going to uh, write the data that we get back to CSV. Um, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to have um, an array called weekly returns and that will be a global variable up here weekly returns and that will just be empty for the time being and we need to have a function here and what that function is going to be is we'll say um, get last week return ticker return uh, you know nothing at the moment and then uh, we'll just say get last week return and then pass in the ticket there okay so now we need to actually do the implementation of what we're actually going to do um, so I have imported something called date time so for you if, if you're going to plan on doing what I've done with my email uh, you want to run this on a Friday in which case you can just do um, you can do now, whoops, equals uh, date time dot date time dot now. And we can use that as a basis for the end of the script. Uh, and then we could do, uh, we need a start date. I just pick some, like the 1st of January in 20, uh, 2005 which I don't think we can have data all the way back that way, but it doesn't really matter. It's just an arbitrary date far enough in the past that I'm going to get all the data I care about. I don't need to go about that far for this particular script, but we're going to do that anyway. Um, and then if you are doing it, if you're going to run this on a cron job on a Friday, I've got a video on how to run cron jobs, by the way, as well, then we can just take the value now, turn it into a string. So we could say now of time and turn it into the same format we've got here which is year uh, month day so that will be 
uh, not infinity it will be where the hell there we go that y dash uh, lowercase m oh my god where the hell there we go and then day and so what that's going to do is that's just going to basically get today's date but uh, in this format in a string now I don't actually care about this because I want to run this uh, for one particular week because this is not the end of the week this day that I'm recording this on so I'm going to pick a day which was a Friday and that will be uh, the 7th of the 3rd like that and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the uh, data we want so uh, what we need to do next is we need to get all of the weekdays. So, um, do we need to get all the weekdays? Yeah, we need to get all the weekdays. So, well, we need to define all the weekdays. So, we're using pandas pd dot date range to basically say that I want to have um, a date a, 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 a pandas array a pandas what are the bloody hell? I forgot what they're called. Uh, a pandas array, basically. It's not called an array. It'll come to me in a minute. A data frame that that has start and end times, and also has certain days in it. So if if the days we give it don't match the criteria, then it won't add them into the array. So we want to say the start is going to be equal to uh, start date, and we want the end to be equal to the cheeky little end date. And then, importantly, we want to say uh, frequency is equal to capital B. Now, what capital B is going to say is it's going to say uh, this is business days. So we only care about Monday through Friday. And if it's not a bank holiday, because obviously this markets aren't open on weekends and bank holidays. So they're the only dates we care about. So that will mean instead of me saying um, take the date and return the value minus seven we're just going to do minus five because it will or minus six actually uh, but we'll, we'll get to that so now we'll get the panel data so the panel data will literally just be uh, the stock data we're going to get and we're going to be using uh, this thing over here um, pandas data reader which I've used in previous videos and all we need to do is say data dot uh, data reader and then pass in the ticker we've passed in to our function use Yahoo as a data source there are other data sources as well um, but you don't need to use them because they have slightly different things. So, for example, my ticker, the ticker list I've provided will work with Yahoo. I know that for a fact, whereas it won't necessarily work with other ones because other company, other places have different tickers. It's a bit annoying. Um, so then we're going to pass in the start and end date as well to that. And that will get us everything we want within the dates we want. And then what we're going to do is we are going to... Um, Reindex things based on this, which means we're basically going to filter out everything that's not a built uh, a business day. So the way we're going to do that, and I only want to get one column. The column is going to be the adjusted close. We don't care about the normal close. The adjusted close is accounting for stock splits. Although over the last week, maybe it wouldn't matter, but the, there is always going to be the chance that a stock that you're looking at has been split in the last few weeks. Oh, in the last week sorry so the prices would be wrong and your calculations would be all out of the place so this uh, adjusted close accounts for what are known as stock splits and by doing that we have a more accurate actual reading so we want to pass in the uh, panel data so this is our function over here I want to pass in the the actual panel data I want to pass in a key of the column we're interested in and how we're re-indexing and so in this case, we are going to be using the adjusted close like that. And I just want to pass in all weekdays. Okay, so now that's going to give us back a column uh, called adjusted close. And if we just have a, uh, have a look, we can print this. And it's starting to give us all the prices that you know we have for various things. Okay, fine. It's not uh, doing anything now. It's given us an error because we haven't actually returned anything from this, but that was just to see that everything's working. Okay, um, the next things we need to do um, is we need to get the current price. And the current price is just going to be the adjusted close. And it's going to be the last item. So minus one. 
and then we need to get last week's close. Now for last week's close, we want to get um, minus six because minus five will be, well, let's say we're on a Friday, minus five will be uh, Monday, whereas actually we want to get last Friday and it's minus six because of course we're not including the weekends because of this frequency B thing. So that's gonna be the right day. Uh, the next thing I think we need is, whoa, that's not what I wanted to do. The next thing we need to do is create a function that's just going to create us, just calculate the return. And so the return calculation is quite simple. Uh, take the current value, the previous value, and what we want to do is say return current value minus the previous value divided by the current value multiplied by 100. That will give us the percentage return of whatever we give it. And in this case, we'll give it today's uh, price and last week's close. So we'll get the weekly return. Um, so another thing as well is that, let's say you disagree with me um, and decide that you don't want to get last week's close to be um, the adjusted close of Friday. You want it to get it from the open on Monday. Well, then to do that, um, you would have a bit more of a pain because Yahoo Finance doesn't offer an adjusted open. So really you'd have to do it on the close thing here. You'd have to do it on the close column. So you'd get your uh, current price would be the t today's close. And your, whoa, why is that not working? And your last week's price or this week's open would in fact um, be based on the open here and not based on that so you'd have two you'd have two panel data that have been adjusted and then that's how you do that as opposed to doing it the way i'm doing it but i think if we're counting the weekly return we really should count um it from last week's close because the open will often open at a greater or lower amount than what it closed at so i think we need to account for that in the weekly return uh, so then we can uh, create something called the weekly return, which is going to be, uh, we call our little function and we'll pass in the current price and last week's close. And then uh, what we want to do is we want to create a, basically just a dictionary object and pass it to our um, weekly returns array. So our weekly we, uh, weekly returns array. We we're going to append to this uh, a little dictionary. And the reason we're appending a dictionary is because the function that I've created up here, the to cv one, takes basically uh, an array of dictionaries and will turn it into a cv csv um, mapped by the keys in the dictionary so that the columns will be the keys in the dictionary. So we can do, uh, we want the ticker, so we know what stock it is. We want to pass in the week ending, so that will be the week ending date or weeking. Week ending uh, date, oh my days, we want the end date, then we want to get the current price like this and that will be uh, current price. Uh, perhaps we also want to get uh, last week's price. And that'll be last week close. And we also want to pass in the weekly return, which will again be a percentage value of what we have. And that looks like it'll all be all gravy. Uh, the other thing we perhaps want to do uh, is encapsulate all this in a try catch block or particularly from the panel block here. So you want to do a try and do, 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 do. try accept block accept and just do uh, you know print error for Ticker that way. If you're running this across all of the um, all the tickers, 
you, you don't have to restart the script each time if an error occurs you can just pass over it and you'll see in the output of your console what's gone wrong and where's gone wrong and then you can investigate that later without having to restart your entire script so um and i probably should have put that try except block in now because if i've done something wrong it's being going to be a pain uh so if we now run this it's going to run Ooh. Aha, it looks like it has actually ran. Okay, it's ran perfectly, which is very, 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 very crazy because every time I write one of these things in a video, it never ever goes right. I've made a calamitous error. Um, so if we would have a, a look now at um, the weekly returns CSV that we just created. Now this looks like a bit of a mess because I'm reading it in a terminal, uh, but we can see that we have the current price, which is here. We have last week's close. We have... Uh, a return value here like this so two percent and then we have the ticker and then we have uh, the week ending as well um, and so obviously if you were to run that for all of the tickets in the list you would have everything and everything will be wonderful okay so uh, that's all i wanted to cover in this video uh, perhaps in future videos we will go ahead and actually create that email that i've created uh, if you're interested in that let me know because otherwise i i might not make it because it's a bit of effort to make it but yes thank you very much for watching au revoir, arrivederci, ta-ta.